Okay. Again, boxes. I love boxes. So. We have this like workday, right? Which is say this is the workday cloud. In workday cloud, wherever we store data, the, the data is stored in multiple objects. Okay. So it's an object oriented, an object based model. So anything which is there is an object. And if you have to compare it with your uh, database related stuff, an object is, you can compare it to a SQL table. Okay. So for example, in Workday, a very common object is worker, right? Worker is nothing but an employee. So that's an object. Now then location is an object. Cost center is an object, right? Customer is an object. Supplier is an object. Okay. So I was saying anything in Workday is a kind of object that's how it is stored each object has different attributes which we also call as which we call as fields so a worker business object for example say if it is worker object it will have different fields like first name last name right even cost center is is part of it then you have company, you have location, job, job code, whatever. A group, right? So these are all fields. Okay, so worker is an object and then it has different fields. Now, if you see inside this, there are some fields which I told you are objects as well, right? So an object can also be a part of an object, right? Company is also there, location is also there. Yep. So as I told, you can compare it that this object is a SQL table and these are the different fields. Okay. Now there is something called as a data source, right? And this data source, you can, if you want to remember it, you can consider it as a SQL view, but you will never use these terms. This is just, I'm saying so that you can relate to it and you'll be able to understand, right? So a SQL view, what's a SQL view? SQL view is built on a SQL table, right? Where you have the SQL table plus a condition. Yep. So similarly, a data source is also a same stuff. A data source is built on an object with some specific condition listed, right? Like for example, there will be some data sources like a very common one, which we will see in our demo data sources, all active and terminated workers, right? So this is a data source which is built on the business object worker, but it has a condition that it will give you all the active and terminated employees. So that's why the data source. So in Workday, whenever today we are starting on the topic Workday reports. So in Workday, whenever you have to create a report, the first thing you have to find out is what is the data source that you will be using. And that depends on what requirement you have. Okay, say you got a requirement that, okay, build a report which should give you, say, 10 fields related to the worker. And it should give you all the active as well as terminated employees, right? So you can use this data source. For that, Workday has given you different tasks which will help you. But as of now, did you guys understand this concept? I will try log into the tenant, but then never use the term as I mentioned, SQL table, SQL view or something like that. It is just for you to correlate and remember. That's it. The terms yeah. we will use is 
object object has different fields and then there are data sources data sources are built on objects right for creating reports we have to use the data source got it. okay then let me having issues logging in right so this is for all of you who are seeing workday for the first time after logging into workday this is how the screen will look like right so this is a demo tenant so you see this is a demo user if you click on this picture it is the user you can view like once you log in you'll view your profile you have again all those things of changing passwords and all those stuff then on the left hand side here you have this button which is inbox right so any notifications that you get like for example if you have to approve something right so for example you're a manager you got a request for a new hire approval and compensation change or anything leave approval this is the place where you will get that right so you can submit send back or cancel so that's the place which is called this workday inbox on left of it there are notifications so notification is something that if you have run a report or any such stuff which takes time right you can just it will give you a notification later on you don't have to stay on that screen until your reports complete so once it completes it will come here okay then this is the that work the symbol if you click on that it will again bring you to the home page okay and then in the center you have this search button where you can there is no navigation as such right in i remember in people soft you have different navigations where you can go and stuff here this is the search bar and you have to type there and you will get it right now say creation of a report right what should be the name of the report or uh, name of the task you have to just say create create report then all the task or actions related to your search will come up right so there are so many stuff now we are doing a custom reporting so our task name is create custom report so that's how you do it when you click on create custom report you have to give the name you have to choose the type of the report right for our session we will do simple and advanced right simple is just for your basic understanding but advanced is the one which will be used for integration okay and then here you have to choose the data source these are the three wherever in workday you see a star mark that's where you will have to mandate mandatory required. enter value required fields right so data source as you see is required report type you have to choose and the name but then before going and creating first we will see how to see what all data sources are available how many business objects are there right so you just there is a task 